Welcome back to module 3 of the first week. In the previous module, we had covered uh, transmission lines and the equations governing them. In this uh, module, we will be covering uh, what is known as reflection coefficient and V S W R. So, while solving the transmission line equations, we had come across two equations, one for the voltage and one for the current. The voltage equation was given like this and the current equation was given like this. Here once again, gamma represents the propagation constant and Z 0 uh, what as what is known as the characteristic impedance. Now, so, the impedance then should be equal to the ratio of V x upon I x just from definition. Now, often what happens is that if we are calculating from the source reference plane, then this x that we have in these equations represents the distance from the source, but that poses a challenge. The challenge being that what is the absolute quantity at the source that we know. Now, if we have a source connected, then you might uh, tell me that the source itself is the reference, but then suppose we just take a transmission line with a load Z L connected to one end and the other end we call it the source end, then you see that we really do not have any reference in the, in the absence of any source that is really connected, we, we do not have any reference. On the other hand, the load that is connected to this end is a standard reference. By standard reference, I mean this value of load remains constant and does not change even if we have some variables at the source end, variables meaning if we have different kinds of sources. So, we can see that then the load at the load end, the presence of this Z L as a reference point makes it more standard reference as compared to the source. So, then we should we might as well start thinking of distances from the load end instead of the source end. So, then what we that is why what we did was we had another reference plane D, which moves in the opposite direction as compared to x and then by doing a coordinate transformation from x to D what we get is this equation. So, these equations you know are what we obtain when we do the coordinate transformation from x to d and if the variable distance along d we call that as L, then we get these equations and then on further solving these equations, we get the values of v plus and v minus as this and then finally, the on solving for the impedance, we get this equation. So, the input impedance at uh, for a transmission line with a load Z L connected is given by this equation. repeat, repeat. Now, if we continue using x as the variable, then uh, we get the following relations for V L and I L that is the voltage and current at the load end, the Z L the impedance at the load end is equal to V L upon I L and that is equal to Z L. And then from these equations, if we solve for V plus and V minus, we get these two equations. And then for finding out Z of minus L, that is the impedance at the source, we get this equation. Now, after doing the coordinate transformation from X to D, we get this equation and we see that from this equation, what we can see is that the value of impedance for a transmission line does not keep increasing or decreasing monotonically with increasing d. It actually repeats because tan, this tan function itself repeats itself, 
in terms of electrical angle every after period pi this value will this z d will repeat itself or in terms of position after every lambda by 2 length z d will repeat itself. So, it is periodic both in uh, electrical angle as well as wavelength and as well as frequency as we shall see later. Now, the impedance of a sh uh, of this uh, transmission line with a load connected at one end, uh, we saw from the previous uh, slide that the input impedance z d here is given by this equation. Now, based on this equation, we can derive some interesting cases. For example, if suppose z l is 0, then we have the input impedance given by this equation. If we have z l as infinity, that is if this end is open circuited, then z d is given by this equation. And then if we have z l is equal to z 0, then we have z d equal to z 0. Now, the question arises is whether for the shorted line it or for the open line using the formulas that we saw in the previous slide, whether the transmission line is open circuit is acts as a the shorted or the open uh, circuited transmission lines act as uh, inductors or capacitors. Now, the answer is not so straightforward because as you can see from these equations, the z d is a function is a tan function for a short circuited line and for an open circuited line z d is a is a cot function. Now, tan and cot both can acquire positive and negative values. Therefore, the values of z d for both the short circuited line and the open circuited line can be negative or positive depending on the values of beta d. For a shorted transmission line or a short circuit transmission line, if we plot the value of the imaginary value of z t, then we get a curve like this, which is basically the tan function. And as we can, we can, we you know, you can work it out that for an open circuited transmission line also, the shape will be the same, except that the point of zero crossing will be different. A matched line is a special case of transmission line, where a load z l with a transmission line having a characteristic impedance z 0 is connected. Now, if z l is equal to z 0, then the circuit is said to be, the line is said to be matched. This will have other meanings also as we shall see later, that matching also will mean that when the reflection coefficient at the load end is 0. That is, there is no reflection at the load end. This will come in a few moments. Now, matching note is different from conjugate matching. This conjugate matching is a concept that is uh, frequently used in lumped element circuit. The conjugate matching is a concept where, which re relates to pow maximum power transfer to the load if z g is the source impedance and then maximum power will be transmitted to the load when z g is the conjugate of z l. Whereas, matching in the in the transmission line sense is the case when there is no reflection at the load end. So, these are two different components, uh, two different concepts uh, we have to keep in mind. Another interesting type of transmission line that uh, exists is what is known as a quarter wave length, trans quarter wave trans transmission line. If suppose the total electrical length of a transmission line with a z load z l connected or r l connected at one end is pi by 2, now this corresponds to a wavelength of lambda by 4 or quarter wavelength, then z in is given by this interesting relationship z in becomes equal to z 0 square upon r l. Now, if z 0 for the transmission line is kept constant, then we see that z in is proportional to the inverse of r l. So, that means a quarter wave transformer inverts uh, a load to its inverse. What it means is that if suppose r l is a shorted stub, 
if that is if R L is 0, then we will see an infinite impedance at the source end or if R L is open circuited, then we will see a short circuit at the input. Now, quarter wave transmission line for a resistive load uh, is, uh, is shown here. Uh, as discussed, the input impedance uh, that we will see here will be the inverse of R L. As I was discussing uh, in the previous few slides that there is a concept called reflection coefficient. So, reflection coefficient is simply the ratio of the negative travelling wave to the positive travelling wave. So, we saw that on solving the transmission line equations, we get two components. One is this V plus component and the other is the V minus component. V plus represents the component of the wave travelling in the positive x direction, whereas V minus is the is that component of the electrum of the transmit of the wave travelling in the transmission line that is moving in the opposite direction. V plus x is also known as the incident wave and V minus x as the reflected wave. So, gamma x or the reflection coefficient is simply the ratio of the reflected wave to the incident wave. And we see that gamma x is given like this on doing a coordinate transformation we can write gamma x like this, where gamma this gamma capital L is the reflection coefficient at the load end. So, this reflection coefficient is the value of gamma x at this point. Now, since a load is connected, we, we will see that this gamma L is constant. If the load is constant, then this gamma capital L will also be constant. An interesting thing that we note is that if suppose we travel uh, electrical length beta d in the clockwise direction. Now, if we are moving in a clockwise direction, then uh, what is happening is that the gamma d, if I write it like this, if d increases that is, if I am moving away from the load, then my phasor becomes more negative. If it becomes more negative, then I am travelling in a clockwise direction. So, every time if uh, I am moving in a clockwise direction along this phasor diagram or I am moving or in terms of the transmission line, I am moving away from the load, then that translates to a clockwise rotation on this phasor diagram. Now, this phasor diagram is simply a plot of the imaginary and real components of gamma. We see that whether we are moving away from the load or towards the load, the magnitude of gamma d remains constant. So, in other words, whether we are moving away from the load or towards the load, the locus that we will be traversing on this gamma plane is that of a circle. And depending on whether we are moving away from the load or towards the load, we will be traversing in a clockwise direction or in an anticlockwise direction. As I said, if I move away from the load, then my d value is increasing my phasor becomes more and more negative. More and more negative means clockwise traversal. The other interesting thing is that if I traverse an electrical length beta d along a transmission line, the total phasor change on the gamma plane is twice of that value. So, if I move beta d away from the load, I will be moving two beta d angles in a clockwise direction. So, these are the conclusions that we can uh, we can derive. As we move along the line, gamma d moves along a circle of radius gamma l magnitude and the reflection coefficient rotates clockwise as d increases and we move towards the generator. The power dissipated of the load, again as I said power is a very important concept in microwave engineering. We have to calculate 
at every point what is the power incident or reflected or what is the net power lost. So, if we want to calculate the total power that is transmitted to the load, then we can write it in along this equation and then after some mathematical derivation, we will arrive at this point. Now, P plus is the power of the incident wave, gamma L is the load reflection coefficient and we see that if gamma L is 0, then P L that is the power delivered to the load is equal to the incident power. Now, the question is, so we see from here that if gamma L is equal to 0, then the entire incident power is delivered to the load. So, this from this, this is why I said that for matched lines, gamma L should be equal to 0. That is matching in, a, in a, as far as impedance matching in microwave engineering is concerned, refers to that condition where the all the power that is reaching the load is delivered to it and no component of the incident power is reflected by. And we see that that will happen when this reflection coefficient is 0. The question is what is that condition? When is that load reflection coefficient equal to 0? To find that out what we do is we find the value of the impedance z x once again and that is given by this equation from which after some mathematical manipulation we can get a relation like this. So, here we have expressed the impedance z x which was previously in expressed in terms of v plus v minus gamma and x and z 0 in terms of the reflection coefficient. Now, from this equation after some mathematical manipulation we can find out an expression for gamma x in terms of z x. So, gamma x at any point is simply equal to the ratio of z x minus z 0 upon z x plus z 0. So, the gamma at the load end that is gamma L from this equation should be equal to this relationship where z L is the load impedance and z 0 is the characteristic impedance. For gamma L to be 0 that is for the matched case that we were discussing z L has to be equal to z 0. So, in other words the condition for matching is that the load connected at the load end should match the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Another interesting concept uh, that is frequently used in microwave engineering is the voltage standing wave ratio. Now, this is a ratio that uh, depends only on the magnitude of the waves of the incident and reflected waves. They have no relationship uh, to the phasor or the phase of the of the incident or reflected wave. Now, the maximum voltage that is achieved uh, at any point on the transmission line will be that uh, will be given like this when there is constructive interference between the incident and reflected wave and the minimum voltage that will be achieved at any point along the transmission line will be this and this happens when there is destructive interference among the reflected and mag reflected and incident wave. Note that when gamma is equal to 1 that is when there is total uh, perfect reflection of the incident wave the minimum value will be 0. Now, the ratio of V max and V min is what is known as voltage standing wave ratio. A perfect matching correspond that is a perfect matching refers to when z l is equal to z 0, then that corresponds to a V s w r of 1 as seen from this relationship. That is when gamma is equal to 1, uh, so when gamma is equal to 0, I beg your pardon, we know that when gamma is equal to 0, there is perfect matching and when that, that happens V s w r is equal to 1. Now, usually for good design as a good design practice V s w r should be usually lesser than 2. That brings us to an end to module 3.